questions here today that we need to answer in order to decide. First, what do we mean by the word evil? What's a definition of evil? What makes some thought or act evil? Not just bad, but evil. The second question is this, why is there evil in the world? Let's take a look at them one at a time. The task before us is a difficult one. Philosophers and saints and thinkers and theologians have wrestled with it for centuries. A few months ago, when I started to think about this, again, after not thinking about it for many years, I saw that the first question, how to define evil, is no easier to answer than the second question of why it exists. So what is evil? A person shoots another person to death. That is murder, but that's not evil. A protest march turns into a mob riot that tries to overthrow the government. That is sedition, but that's not evil. A drunken father beats his wife, then beats his kids, while the drug-addicted mother remains silent. That is horrendous abuse, but that's not evil. The Aztecs, as part of their religion, practiced human sacrifice, but it was mostly of those who volunteered in order to prevent the end of the world and to get to an afterlife that was extremely brutal and delusional, but not evil. A lone gunman, gunman shoots up a school and kills many children. That is horrendously tragic. It's mental illness toting guns but it's not evil. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If those are of evil, then what is evil? All those examples are bad. Evil, however, is not a moral term. It's a psychological and sociological term. If all violence is said to be evil, both mental and physical violence, and all violent crimes are said to be evil, then the word loses its meaning. Then everything is evil, so nothing is. Before I tell you my own definition of evil, let me share an idea that is a question itself. Is the word evil a noun or is it an adjective? This is important. As a noun, an example would be there's more evil in there than anywhere. As an adjective, an example would be, he is an evil person. So we can use it either way. If it is seen to be a noun, then the evil is in the act or the thought. It is not in the person who thinks the thought or commits the act. If, however, the word evil is an adjective, then he or she who commits the act or thinks the thought is evil. It is their identity, part of their beingness, temporarily or permanently. It seems to me that any credible definition of evil has to include both noun and adjective. Here is my definition of evil. See if it makes sense to you. Evil is any thought or act that dehumanizes the victim and dehumanizes the doer, the perpetrator, both, because it does do that. If you do dehumanize another person or other peoples, you automatically dehumanize yourself. For how long that lasts is a spectrum. For some, it lasts a lifetime. For others, not very long. The journalist David Anson said, quote, to any sane person, there has always been an unfathomable mystery about the systematic evil the Nazi regime perpetrated. Like a moral black hole, it seems to defy the laws of nature while being a part of that nature. The best example of evil would be the Holocaust. It dehumanizes the Jews, the gypsies, the handicapped, the gays. It also dehumanized the Nazis. 
on some level, the Holocaust deniers understand this and cannot accept it. It's too threatening. Another good example would be racial slavery. The enslaved were dehumanized by what the enslavers thought about and did to the enslaved. But they also dehumanized themselves and their white ancestors today cannot and will not admit it or handle it. It's an ex it is an existential truth such that the Nazi or the racial enslaver is evil, both as a noun, he is evil, and also as an adjective, he did evil acts. To support this idea, one only needs to value truth and freedom. We can surely think of other examples from history or even perhaps from current events. Another example is the dehumanization of the Ukrainian people by the Russians calling them Nazis. That's an automatic dehumanization. Thus, they think the other, quote, other people deserve to be insulted, beat up, or killed because they are less than human. Many of you might say that those examples are mostly of groups of evil people, but what about an individual? That may be more rare, but it is a classic example it would be the Nazi doctor, Joseph Mengele, called the angel of death, who conducted horrific racially motivated medical experiments on people selected from the gas chambers. In my opinion, he fits the definition. He did evil things and he was evil himself. Another example of dehumanization would be Donald Trump calling Nancy Pelosi an animal. He dehumanized her. I am pleased that my definition takes evil out of the purview of religion and places it elsewhere in the physical and social sciences in the secular realm. So if my definition of evil suffices, we now come to the second question. Why is there evil in the world? For the answer, we can look to one or more of three possible categories of answers. We can look to physical science, or we can look to social science, or we can look to religious anti-science. The physical science that best explains evil is biology, genetics, especially epigenetics. As we know, genetics is a study of genes that control the functions of the mind and body. Epigenetics is the study of inheritable changes of the organism caused by modification of gene expression passed down from one generation to another. An epigenetic change can occur in the womb or in the outer environment of the, of the person. It's not automatic, but it can and does happen. For example, trauma can leave a chemical mark on a person's genes which is then passed down to subsequent generations. If the change is substantial, it can result in evil. The evil may or may not manifest in the parent, but can do so in an offspring. This can help explain why evil persists, but it does not explain why evil exists in the first place. If we look to the second category, the social sciences, psychology, sociology, politics, anthropology, economics, we know that a plenitude of social factors can impact on a person to a degree that le leads him or her to evil. If those, any of the five social sciences, are seriously dysfunctional in a person or group, the result can manifest in evil. With psychology, we get a deranged mind, a person who cannot tell right from wrong or, or reality from alternative reality, a psychopath. With sociology, we get a mob, 
such as a lynch mob, where people surrender their individual minds to the collective mind and dehumanize the, quote, others and themselves and end up being and doing evil. With the culture or subculture, we get collective mass delusion, fanaticism, justification of evil. Sometimes two or three of them go together and play into each other, which makes for mass evil, such as the witch trials of thousands of women centuries ago, or the mass genocides in the last couple of centuries, such as the genocide of the Native Americans. So now we come to the third category of the answer to the question, why is there evil in the world? It is the tie between religion and evil, which occurs on two levels. The first level is the many times in history religion has been the cause of the evil. Soldiers are soldiers and often act in evil ways, killing, maiming, raping, and destroying in the name of the deity of their religion as they dehumanize the enemy. Organized religion claiming God is, in our, is on our side is dangerous, especially when both sides have the same God. <laughs> they tend to de dehumanize each other. Often people in civilian power, politicians and, the, and their constituents claim to act in the name of their God as they dehumanize the other and depart from reality. They become trapped in collective delusion and see all kinds of demonic conspiracies and conspiracies to fight against. For God and country can be used to justify anything, including evil. As Sinclair Lewis said, when fascism comes to America, it will come with the cross wrapped in the flag. Thus, theocracy and autocracy as a package. Some people say there is evil in the world because there are evil people. This is meaningless. It says there are evil people because there, are, there is evil. This implies that evil exists as a force independent of human beings. That's just not so. Now to the third explanation of why there is evil, after genetics, psychology, sociology, and the other social sciences, which is the religious explanation. The vast majority of the people in our culture are Christians, so I will use that as an example. Going back as far as St. Augustine, around 400 CE, there have been over 100 different explanations as to why there is evil and why it's not God's fault. They are called theodicies. The most popular one is called the devil. It is said that the devil is why there is evil in the world. If you look at the word devil and take off the D, you get evil. Thus, the devil and evil are conflated. But that does not in any way explain why there is evil. It says that evil is why there is evil. That's absurd. If you extrapolate that idea, then there is good and there is evil. According to religion, you can't have one without the other. It's like yin and yang and up and down. Religionists say good and evil are moral terms that they go together and are necessary to each other, like up and down. Take the O out of good, and you get God. Good and evil are not opposites. Good and bad are opposites, but not good and evil. Thus, they are saying that evil is necessary without knowing they are saying it. I hold that evil is not necessary because evil is not a moral term, it's a secular term. Morally good and morally bad are moral terms. Just because evil is pervasive does not make it necessary, except as a moral dichotomy. Another religious rationalization 
or excuse for their being evil is that God has a plan that includes evil and suffering. God, as it, said, it is said, has morally sufficient reasons for this. We don't know what God's plan is, as it is said, and we will never know, and it is not ours to question this, as it is beyond our comprehension. Don't blame God. That tells us to not question authority. All of the theodicies are not reasons to believe, they are excuses for believing. Here's another often heard theodicy. God is all good, all powerful, and all knowing, but he does not cause or prevent evil things from happening. Don't blame God. Let's take a closer look at that theodicy. How can God be all good if evil happens and God plans everything? Either God is not all good, or God is all good and does not care about human affairs. If God cares, then why does he not prevent evil from happening? But God does not prevent evil from happening, so God, if he cares, must not be all-powerful. If God is all-knowing, then God knows that evil will happen and allows evil to happen. The religionists say things such as, quote, God works in mysterious ways, or we don't know the mind of God, so we don't know what God would or would not do, or God has good reasons for allowing evil to exist. This is a myth that has become dogma. This is a myth that has become dogma. This is advocating and fostering ignorance. All of the religious excuses for evil are supported by the idea that humans have God-given free will and are totally free to do or not do evil. So God has nothing to do with it. People, it is said, are totally free to not do evil despite and in denial of the causative factors of psychology, sociology, economics, politics, anthropology, and physical science as related above. To believe that, and it is believed by millions of people, maybe by billions of people, to toss out psychology, sociology, economics, and so on, all of which are supported by real world evidence, one must fall back on faith. First of all, if God doesn't care about evil and or has nothing to do with it, faith in an uncaring deity is not in any way consistent with the idea that God loves all his children. Secondly, to discount the insights of both physical and social science into human behavior is simply denial of reality. That denial allows evil and ignorance to perpetuate historically to a degree that is dangerous and certifiable. If evil is to be eradicated, we need more insight based on research and reason, not faith. Let me conclude with what I consider to be my definition of dehumanize which term I use to define evil. When somebody is thinking about or acting toward another person, or many people, in such a manner that the basic human worth and dignity and value of that person is not respected, the person or people is or dehumanized. They are worth less, two words, or worthless, one word. They are subhuman. The person is seen as totally other or totally inferior in a way that he or she cannot change. This then justifies thinking the evil thought about them or doing the evil thing to them because it is thought they deserve to be harmed or killed. 
the history of fascism, anti-Semitism, and genocide provide the truth of that. In our local community last month, a right-winger who I know, who mowed our hay every year, said to me, in all seriousness, quote, all Democrats should be shot. <laughs> 